Herring Run Park is located in the northeast corner of Baltimore City. While the watershed extends north into Baltimore County, Herring Run Park property is south of the county line and terminates near the eastern border of Baltimore City, where Herring Run flows into Back River. During this virtual hike, we will share Herring Run Park treasures from Pulaski Highway in the south to Eckerdale Avenue in the north. The river valley extends across two geological features, Coastal Plain and Piedmont Plateau, and it flows into the Back River, a major tributary to the Chesapeake Bay. The Lower Herring Run is situated in the Coastal Plain. The stream is wide and shallow here. The soil is silty and sandy. Present-day Lower Herring Run Park is nearly 80 acres of wilderness over what was once a mid-20th century landfill. It's now home to a wide variety of wildlife. In colonial times, a stately home named Mount Deposit was situated on the edge of the present-day community of Armistead Gardens. That home was famous for its terrace gardens and was featured in several paintings in its day. Existing since the early 1800s, the house was occupied by Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Sterrett, commander of the 5th Maryland Regiment during the War of 1812. Advancing British troops occupied the house during the Battle of North Point and famously raided the wine cellar. The Armstead Garden Housing Corporation uses the remnants of Mount Deposit as their Fox Mansion community space. Post-Civil War, maps indicate a horse track named Bishop's Driving Park located in Lower Herring Run. Its location spanned present-day Parkland, Interstate 895, and the Baltimore City impound lot. What other history is covered up by modern infrastructure? This bend in the stream is located where Armistead Run, a small tributary, flows into Herring Run. The sandy shoreline is indicative of the coastal plain. Large patches of milkweed are scattered throughout the lower Herring Run, providing a perfect habitat for monarch butterflies. Crisscrossing through woods and meadows are miles of unmarked trails where you're bound to encounter deer, fox, and a variety of reptiles. Bridging the Lower Herring Run to the upper portion of the park is a gem of green space known as Buttonbush Swamp, named after a native shrub that thrives in bogs and wetlands and is a food source for birds and butterflies. This peaceful little swamp is an ideal habitat for wildlife, such as beaver and raccoon. BGE power lines bisect this area, providing a scenic trail enjoyed for generations. The BGE Power Line Trail is only a small part of Rails to Trails Baltimore 35 Mile Greenway Trail Network. They plan to connect 50 of Baltimore's neighborhoods as first envisioned by the Olmsted Brothers Landscape Architectural Firm in 1904. The view from the top of the Power Line Trail is surprisingly beautiful. Even the transmission towers don't detract from the vista. It's a great location for birding, too. As we cross Sinclair Lane, we enter what was historically an industrial river valley. Today it is a recreational area, but there are some remaining clues to its past. A meandering pedestrian trail winds the length of Herring Run Park. Updated in 2014, an existing trail system was expanded and renovated. Volunteers with Friends of Herring Run Parks and their partners at Flowering Tree Trails of Baltimore planted over 100 flowering trees along the newer portion of the trail. Blooming trees will grace the trail in the spring and shade trail users in the summer. Herring Run Park is fortunate to be home to three playgrounds. This playground at Parkside Drive and Robertson Avenue is a favorite destination for children and their families. An example of industrialization along Herring Run was Furley Hall, its dairy, and its gristmill. Once a prosperous estate, it was raised in 1953 for the construction of the Parkside community. If you look closely, there may still be some clues of the old mill. Is this stone wall a remnant of the old mill race? The water power of Herring Run is what contributed to the industrialization of the river valley. That same water power can be a challenge to control. Areas of erosion can be seen the length of Herring Run. Attempts at controlling an ever-changing stream are ongoing. A colorful playground at Shannon Drive and Brems Lane is a shady play area that's situated streamside 
and in a shallow knoll. Just a short stretch of Herring Run is situated between two bridges, but it's a beautiful spot. We invite you to enjoy this beautiful part of the stream. The area of Herring Run between Minnesota Avenue and Bel Air Road is equally as beautiful. As evidence from old photos, this was a favorite spot for park visitors. Clues of a walkway under the Minnesota Avenue Bridge still exist if you look hard enough. This part of the stream valley is an obvious transition from sediment of coastal plain to the rocky Piedmont Plateau. Named the fall line, this shift to ancient rock is indicative of the elevation shift that runs the length of the mid-Atlantic. Most people aren't aware of the geological shift, they just love the park because it's beautiful. We're thankful for the many volunteers who tend to the care and cultivation of Heron Run Park. Beautiful mature trees grace the curving trails along Shannon Drive, such a special part of Heron Run Park. At the corner of Shannon Drive and Bel Air Road sits a World War I monument that was erected in 1921 in tribute to the servicemen from the community who served during the war. We now cross over Bel Air Road Route 1, a major highway project built in the 1920s that paralleled the fall line and connected many East Coast cities. At the corner of Parkside Drive and Bel Air Road are the remains of a stone lodge once used by the Boy Scouts but long abandoned. This brief article describes a probable Depression-era enhancement to Herring Run Park designed to accommodate travelers on the newly improved Route 1. All but the stone lodge remains as clues to its existence. A more contemporary structure marks the trail at Bel Air Road Referred to as the Movie Shed, community organizations and recreation and parks have projected movies on the side of this building. Named for past director of Tremendous Maryland, a program of the Maryland Forest Service credited for planting six and a half million trees in Maryland, the Wally Orlinski Memorial Redbud Walk was dedicated in 2002 and is a beautiful asset to our park. There was once a legendary swamp white oak tree that towered over Father Hooper Field at Chesterfield Avenue and Harford Road. In 1999, it was recognized as a Baltimore City Champion tree, measuring 86 feet in height and 17 feet 4 inches in circumference. In 2013, it was the victim of a picnic fire, and now all that remains of it is a stately stump. Eric Deal, Baltimore's new city arborist at the time, counted 200 rings on the stump. Think of the history that tree had seen. In preparation of the Hartford Road Bridge construction project, in 2015, a pedestrian bridge was built spanning the Herring Run. This bridge would replace the old pedestrian bridge located under the northernmost arch of the Hartford Road Bridge. The old pedestrian bridge was located where the original Hartford Road was in the early 1900s. In a field at the base of a large slope leading to Eastwood Drive is a semicircle of bluebird houses that are yet another example of community stewardship. Built and installed by a community member, they are for all to enjoy, even the swallows. Another nod to the history of Herring Run Park as an industrial river valley, the 1788 Charles Wilson Peel portrait of William Smith depicts the once bustling Utah farm and gristmill in the background. Archaeological exploration of Utah Farm is ongoing, conducted by the Herring Run Archaeology Project. Just a little north of the new pedestrian bridge, there's a lovely little spot near the bank of a small tributary. In the spring, it's covered with a carpet of lesser celandine yellow flowers, a less than desirable invasive, but the splash of color highlights an old stone wall that is all but invisible other times of the year. What is that stone wall? Is it a remnant of the old Utah mill race? Located at the junction of Herring Run and a small tributary called Tiffany Run, 
The original Hartford Road ran through a little hamlet that was first settled in the early 1800s. Hall Springs got its name because of a freshwater spring that was a popular destination for day trippers and area residents alike. Accessible for generations, it is no longer flowing. What is currently an access road into the park from Chesterfield Avenue to Argonne Drive, it was the original Baltimore and Hartford Turnpike, later named Hartford Road. Due to repeated flooding, the bridge over Herring Run on the old Baltimore and Hartford Turnpike was subject to reconstruction and repair. In the early 1800s, an establishment known as the Herring Run Tavern served travelers on the Baltimore and Hartford Turnpike. Later expanded and renamed the Hall Spring Hotel, it was popular with tourists and employees of nearby mills. With the construction of the Hartford Road Bridge completed in 1912 and the annexation of Baltimore County, the northeast part of the city increased in population. The small hamlet of Hall Spring fell in decline and structures that once housed residents of the mills were abandoned for brand new housing stock that exploded in the 1920s. Built in 1860, only a shell of the Utah Methodist Church exists today. Perched on a hilltop, you can sneak a peek of it through the trees while driving across the Harford Road Bridge. Another of the three playgrounds located in Herring Run Park, the Hall Spring Playground is located on the site of the old Hall Spring Hotel. More than 100 years after the construction of the Harford Road Bridge, a new bridge is planned. Will the new bridge be as iconic and beloved as the old bridge? The main entrance to Herring Run Park is at the intersection of Harford Road where Argonne Drive changes name to Parkside Drive. Near the gateway to the entrance of Herring Run Park is a triangular portion of the park that has an elegant obelisk situated in a grove of mature trees. It's a popular location for community festivals, but otherwise a quiet and peaceful place to visit. As late as 1912, Columbia Mill, also known as Green's Cotton Mill, still stood on the Herring Run in Larville, north of Argonne Drive. Heading north in the river valley, the banks become steep and rocky. A long admired outcropping known as Skull Rock has fascinated park visitors for over 100 years. Evidence of further industrialization exists in mysterious ruins of foundations on the hillside behind Morgan State University campus. Once the location of Ivy Mill, another grist mill on the Herring Run, Morgan State University established itself within the Herring Run River Valley in 1917. The campus resides on 143 acres seated above the Herring Run. At the north end of the park, and the Morgan State University campus is Echo Dale Bridge, one last bridge that spans the Herring Run within the Herring Run Park. Much like the pedestrian walkway under the Minnesota Avenue Bridge, there's an elegant walkway under the Echo Dale Bridge. Admire the architecture of it as you end your virtual hike of Herring Run Park. We invite you to visit Herring Run Park and enjoy all that it has to offer.